This week for EM and 5, we're going to talk about the approach to syncope. So syncope is a brief loss of consciousness. It has to be transient. Otherwise, it's just altered mental status. They usually have to have a loss of tone. Um, and there's usually a little associated memory loss with the event as well. And once you establish with the patient that they did actually syncopize or maybe have a pre-syncopal episode, you need to start thinking about the different causes of syncope. Now, the big two scary causes are either cardiac or neurogenic. So for cardiac, it's usually arrhythmias or a massive heart attack, valve issues. And for neurology, sometimes strokes can cause it, more likely the ones with intracranial hemorrhage. You can also see it with a subarachnoid hemorrhage, the brief onset of headache might pass out for a second before waking up again. Now, other causes of syncope might be from hypotension, and that can be from a number of different systems. It usually causes a brief hypotensive episode, the patient passes out, and then they wake back up again. And that can sometimes be from loss of blood, loss of fluids, maybe sudden onset, severe pain. And then the last category we have is these reflex-mediated ones. And those are we're actually pretty familiar with, vasovagal. You can also categorize orthostatic hypotension in that category. And since vasovagal syncope makes up such a large portion of the patients we see, I just wanted to mention it briefly. So this is when you get an overdrive of that vagus nerve stimulation and you get vasodilation causing a drop of blood pressure. Now normally when blood pressure drops, like say from hypovolemia, your heart rate goes up to compensate for it so that you don't lose consciousness. But with vagus nerve stimulation, it actually is the opposite. So you get bradycardia and that's just too much loss of cerebral blood flow and you end up passing out. Now, the nice thing with these patients is if you ask them a lot of questions, they're going to have a very similar story. So they'll say that they have this very typical prodrome where they get warm, maybe flushed, get really nauseous, lightheaded. They have that kind of blackout of vision or tunnel vision. It's a little bit of a slow onset and they can feel it coming. The other thing is that usually there's some kind of trigger like a noxious stimuli. Maybe they're standing for a really long period of time in a crowded place or got overheated or some kind of instrumentation. We've all had that patient that you start an IV on and they almost pass out on you. So usually with taking a good history, you can actually make this diagnosis. And that's good news for us because overall as a diagnosis, it's not that serious. It's okay as long as they didn't hurt themselves when they fell. Now most of the workup for syncope is actually just in the history and physical. And then I'd encourage you to get every patient an EKG. After your EKG, it's up to you. It's whatever you're concerned about. I'd encourage you to get young females a pregnancy test. And then after that, you work up what you're concerned about. If the patient had chest pain or palpitations, then I'd go ahead and get cardiac enzymes or maybe a cardiac echo. If they're having hypoxia and severe shortness of breath, maybe they need a CTPE scan. If they're having a severe headache or any focal deficits, then they need a CAT scan. But none of these things are necessary or required in a patient who has syncope. So I said a good history and physical will pretty much get you your diagnosis a lot of the times. So things that I would ask them, what were you doing at the time? Were you exerting yourself? Were you just sitting there? And what was the context? Were you really dehydrated? Were you really anxious? Have you been ill recently and had the flu and been vomiting all day? And then, this is really important, you have to ask everybody, were there any symptoms before or after? So ask, were they having any chest pain, any palpitations, any headache, any focal deficits? Ask about a prodrome. That can be helpful. And then ask any witnesses in the area where they having a long period of shaking or post state. It's really helpful if you can get that witness account to tell you kind of what happened because a lot of times the patient doesn't really remember. As far as history, you always have to ask, was there any personal cardiac history in the family? And then especially in younger patients who've had a syncopal episode, ask if there's any unexplained deaths in the family at a young age age that would be concerning for hokum. Okay, now I said everyone needs an EKG. Here's the things you have to look for and document on your EKG. First off, you're just going to look for any arrhythmias or any ischemia. I hope you do that on every EKG, but make sure you document it. Now specifically, there's four more things for syncope that I want you to look for and document. Number one, do they have a lung QT? This could indicate toxicity, lung QT syndrome, electrolytes, different medications can cause this. And why it's important is that a long QT can lead you to go into an arrhythmia for a brief period of time. Number two, is there a delta wave? This would be indicative of WPW. Again, this can cause arrhythmias that can make you syncopize, and patients can go in and out of those arrhythmias. Number three, is there hypertrophy? Now, I know a lot of patients have hypertrophy, but what you're looking for is an inappropriate hypertrophy. So a young patient who should really have no hypertension, no cardiac history, and they have this large voltage that's concerning for hypertrophy, then you should start thinking about hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and look for those signs on the EKG. And the last thing is the Brugada wave. That's just a pattern you have to start recognizing and looking for on every EKG in syncope. So in your next patient who syncopizes, make sure and take a really good history, do a good physical, and get an EKG and you'll be well on your way. 
Here's the references, and thanks for joining us on EMN5.